my name is Michaela Winters. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Melbourne, but I'm working in collaboration with the University of Copenhagen. My research is on food microbiology. So I'm here with Michaela at uh, the poster area. The poster session has already begun, so you can kind of hear the vibe um, of the conference. So. Michaela, I want to address you and your, the session that we saw earlier today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what, what you talked in the session? So I was discussing my uh, critical review that I published in FEMSIS Research and it was on uh, quorum sensing in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So kind of like two parts where we've kind of, we proposed some new criteria for how to define a quorum sensing and intercellular signaling mechanism and then we analysed previous research using that criteria uh, to see if there was any research gaps and mm -hmm. further research that needed to be done. Um, basically to guide my PhD research into yeah. what research gaps needed to be addressed. Yeah, because we know like quorum sensing was found in the late 1960s, start of 1970s by Hastings, right? Mm. In bacteria, but yeah. like um, I wasn't uh, aware that um, quorum sensing was possible in yeast or how does you know, the yeast research on quorum sensing go. Yes, yeah, so that's much more recent. I think, yeah, it was first suggested in um, Candida albicans, and then the most recent one for Saccharomyces was 2006, I think, yeah, so it's quite recent, and it was suggested to control the switch to filamentous growth um, through some alcoholic molecules. So because it was a cell density dependent mechanism, I think that was why they, the link to quorum sensing, mm -hmm. but um, our review kind of suggested that yeah, it needed more research to like say with surety that it was actually a quorum sensing mechanism. Mm -hmm. And do you expect that if it is quorum sensing or if it's something else, what type of effects would that have in, in, in yeast? Is it uh, beneficial? Is it to to have other, to produce other problems for neighboring communities? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think, because it's claimed to control a switch to filamentous growth, so I, that has kind of applications in, well, in A, just understanding the signaling mechanism in yeast, which also, as Saccharomyces is a model organism for other pathogenic yeast, so it generally is just helping understand how filamentous growth is regulated. And also the applications of those, the quorum sensing molecules, because they're actually very relevant to food fermentations, like specifically in wine, like 2 phenyl ethanol is a quorum sensing, a claimed quorum sensing molecule in yeast, mm -hmm. and it's linked to like aroma in wine quite strongly. So there's kind of interest in it in terms of potentially how it could interact in food fermentations and what role it plays mm -hmm. in that kind of area. So you feel like understanding better kind of the, uh, the quorum sensing or intercellular, inter, mm. intercellular signaling yeah. pathway might help you kind of switch on or switch off whenever yeah. you need, right? Yeah, if you want these molecules, for example, or if they're causing um, effects that you don't want, then you know that these are the molecules you need to yeah, remove and things like that. Um, yeah, kind of like tweaking the fermentation for the desired outcome when you understand how they interact and what effects they have. Mm -hmm. And in your review, have you just focused on one species of yeast, so Saccharomyces, or did you kind of consider the bro more of a broader view? So, yeah, my review is just Saccharomyces cerevisiae focused, um, mainly because of the f cause my field's more food fermentation, so uh, we also then, the later research is also still focusing on Saccharomyces cerevisiae because it's more relevant to food. Um, and the only, yeah, the main other yeast that has it is Candida, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is more of a me medical relevance. Um, so yeah, we were more focused on Saccharomyces, and we also were looking at some sourdough strains. That's a little bit of my re like research interest as well, and comparing a sourdough isolate of Saccharomyces to the laboratory strains' behavior in terms yeah. of filamentous growth. Yeah, yeah. And now we're moving a little bit forward on how how you're finding the, the conference so far in your overall experience. You know, it's yeah. it's it's been a while for us to be in, <laughs> in person years, conferences, yeah. right? So, uh, how how, yeah. how is your overall experience so far? Yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. I think, uh, yeah, it's been a long time without being able to network people and have that like personal interaction. I think it's really nice, and I think, well, for me personally, I think now towards the end of my PhD, 
it's nice to have like more results and you have more of a, an idea of maybe future mm -hmm. work and careers. It's nice to be able to network and speak to people and also yeah learn more about other people's research and yeah. broaden it outside my like very specific PhD topic. And finally, like where do you think you'll go next with you know you've done the review? What's next? Yeah. So well, we have so. Based on the review, we identified some research gaps and kind of that led the next part of my research in my PhD, which we've now uh, published, so hope, well, submitted. <laughs> so hopefully that will be published soon. And then for me, yeah, it's finishing my PhD and hopefully finding <laughs> some career. Yeah, I mean, I would like to wish you good luck with that. And I, I hope that the conference was inspirational for you and the rest of your research. And, you know, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.